So, what do you think? Is our plea deal in the works for Matt Gates? We'll see. Uh, if you like the video, I hope you do like it. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So I guess that's the question. Is there a plea deal in the works? Will something even be offered? I mean, we don't know that, that something would even be offered. What does Matt have to plea up? Like maybe some uh, insurrection information, but it's not related. So I don't know that that would work out. Well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll just pull the card. I feel like I've read so much on this thing that it's almost uh, worked out. And who knows when it will actually come to some sort of a, a fruition, some sort of a trial, uh, because Joel Greenberg is just stretching out all his information as long as he can, it seems like to me. So we'll see what the cards say. Plea deal. Okay, so this is the Jungian Tarot, tarot uh, by Robert Wang. And so, very interesting uh, set of cards. So, the box, I always like to start with that. It's a nice, sturdy box. It's like a box that maybe perfume would come in. It's kind of that quality. And um, it's got an interesting story about these. Uh, Robert Wang developed the Jungian Tarot as a visual gateway into the complexities of Jungian psychology uh, to aid in the process of active imagination uh, proposed by Carl Jung in the 22 Major Arcana uh, represent Jungian archetypes of the collective unconscious. So it's interesting. So these um, Carl Jung actually developed these cards for use in psychoanalysis. Uh, the the so everything about them is very very thoughtful. Um, the uh, booklet is good. It talks a little bit here, and I'll just tell you quickly. Um, the Jungian tarot, tarot is a set of arch, uh, archetypical uh, images carefully uh, designed for use in a process which Carl Jung, one of the founders of the psychoanalytic uh, movement called Active Imagination, is hoped that the readers will find in these pictures a comfortable visual introduction to the principle of Jungian psychology and that they will be encouraged to seriously consider Dr. Jung's brilliant summation of the Western uh, uh, mystery tradition and his translation of, the, of its ideas into modern psychological terms. And what's interesting here is that the last part of this said uh, I like this. It says, in this regard, it should be understood that most current accepted systems of value assignment for, for regular tarot cards were arbitrarily developed by 19th century occult groups. I take, uh, I don't know about arbitrarily developed, but by 19th century occult groups, by contrast, the attributes to the Jungian tarot have been painstakingly researched in an effort to clearly relate tarot interpretation to the more ancient and traditional study of astrology and of the uh, Hermetic Kabbalah. So, I like it. And then the interpretations in, in here are very good and they're in keeping with the typical uh, writer weight uh, interpretations. So you can fall back on that. The cards are a really good uh, stock of cards and they're, uh, in, they have an interesting back. It's a, uh, they feature a lot of the cards on the back here. Um, they fit into your hands really well uh, and uh, they work really well. So the one thing, I won't say that they're completely like you, they're, they're completely um, easy to interpret just because the uh, pr uh, val <laughs> the page, the knight, the king, and the queen are not clear to uh, interpret um, just because it's not clear that the queen is a queen and the king is a king. And the page, this is a page, for instance. So you might think, oh, well, that's a queen, but no, it's not. So you have to figure that part of them out. And there's a couple other cards that are a little less um, intuitive to uh, figure out. But it's interesting to use these cards. And I use them when I've got a particularly um, psychological subject that I want to delve into. So I don't use them awfully that much, really. And I should, uh, because they work very well. It's surprising the interpretations you get out of these. So lots of thought was gone into Carl Jung's design of these cards. Uh, lots of thought was gone into Robert Wang uh, putting them into a tarot set. And uh, so here we go. They're, they're well worth uh, the uh, time and money, especially if you understand your uh, uh, Rider weight system of tarot. So Matt Gates, will he take a plea? It seems like with all the psychological problem some of these folks seem to have that these cards might be the perfect ones for this divination today. So Matt Gates, will he take a plea? Let's see what the cards have to say. 
you know, there's times when people do things that they think are right and they come out wrong. And there's times when people do the wrong thing, knowing they're doing the wrong thing, but it comes out right for them. And um, so let's just see what these cards have to say to Matt Gates, and will he take a plea? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Matt Gates. Will he take a plea? Will he be offered a plea? No, will he take a plea? Okay. So the signifier card for Matt Gates, will he take a plea? Is this Nine of Cups. And the Nine of Cups is the greedy merchant, as I was referred to. It's also wishes fulfilled. And it's interesting that this card uh, comes up. It's, it's a yes card usually. It's usually a happy card to get. This card uh, comes to us uh, in a, an ocean of, e of emotion, you know, for these cups but with a dark night and a full moon, it looks like. So that's the signifier card for this. Wishes fulfilled. These challenge to that is this... Oh, what is this card? What is this card? I don't know that this is strength. You know, I'm going to have to look it up because I'm just guessing at this point what is that darn card so we'll get the booklet out here and we'll look for that little picture the one problem with this uh, little uh, divination book so that's the fool you're kidding me wow i would not have guessed that's the fool so i better leave that book out in case i need it again these cards are not uh, completely intuitive so the fool so this is the beginning of a journey. Uh, the fool uh, goes off uh, kind of half-cocked with just what he thinks he needs to take that journey. And so the challenge to this wish is fulfilled, this nine of cups, uh, this uh, greedy merchant is uh, beginning a new journey. Oh, I wonder if this could be the beginning of a sentence. Interesting. So let's see, as in the beginning of a punishment sentence. Uh, the basis of this uh, reading then, four, six, seven, eight of uh, coins. And the Eight of Coins is um, really having uh, everything that you need um, towards uh, getting this thing accomplished. It's a lot of value, and uh, it's a nice, evenly distributed uh, amount of value. So it comes out with a good, solid, um, uh, sort of an apprentice uh, card is what this represents. is a good, solid foundation to build the rest of this on. Interesting. Huh. The pass to this reading, then is the Six of Coins. Uh, the Six of Coins, I have to think about this for a minute, but uh, the Six of Coins is a lot of value. Mm. The Five of Coins is the is looking into the mirror, into the uh, church, uh, and feeling uh, left out. The Six of Coins is going to... I've got to look at my cheat sheet. Uh, my mind is just going blank uh, for me right now. The Six of Pentacles is... Oh, yeah, it's that, it's that equal distribution of the wealth that you've got. So if we're coming at this as this uh, wishes fulfill the greedy merchant, and we're starting off on this journey, which could be, you know, a, a, a legal sentence, uh, and you and you started off with uh, all the um, value that you needed, and then here in the past we have an equal distribution of the value, hmm. an equal distribution of the punishment, perhaps, makes for a plea deal. In the sky, of this reading is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of wands, and the seven of wands is um, kind of having to defend yourself against a lot of issues. And uh, this is very fertile ground. These wands are on fire. And so I would say this is not a bad card for him to have in that the sky position. And in the likely outcome of this for him is this Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords, this is justice and uh, for me. And this is uh, the law. And this is uh, law wielding her power. Not all the power that she has as a king, but most of it that she has as a queen. Interesting. Now, for the last bit of this as to whether he'll take a plea deal, it looks to me like he will. That, 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 that's what's coming his way. But the uh, signifier card for that question, will he take a plea deal, ah, is this queen of, of, of coin, queen of value. <coughs> Again, 
this says to me someone who's really in charge of their of their of their value. Yeah, I think that this might be the way this is going. Uh, the environment that that's in, then four, five, six, the six of swords. Six of swords is, um, and again, I'm going to have to look it up again. I'm just, I'm sorry that my mind is just kind of a blank today. But some days are like that. Six of swords is um, acceptance, uh, escape, seeking refuge, huh, leaving. So the six of swords is is telling you that you've got your truths and your justice is all lined up. And um, this is a good environment for this queen to be in, as a matter of fact, the six of swords. The um, hopes and the fears for this, uh, with this great big ace of uh, wands. So that's an action. That's a plan. That's moving forward. And uh, this almost reminds me of, of taking an oath. So I think the hopes and the fears for him is that he does get this action. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing as to whether he'll take a, a plea, look at that, is this, um, oh, is this the king? And this is the, is this the king of pentacles or is this the chariot? Again, I'm going to look it up because I'm, these cards are so cryptic. I don't want to make the wrong interpretation. And thank you guys for being patient with me. If you are being patient and if you've already tuned out, I understand. I might have done the same thing if someone else was so uh, un- um, knowing it is the chariot as a matter of fact so so that's things coming on quickly so that crown threw me off but yeah so this is things coming on quickly so to go back over it so the signifier the thing was this uh nine of cups the greedy merchant okay wishes fulfilled challenged by the fool starting on his journey that could be a scent of you know some sort of a, a sentence that he has to start on it that just seems makes sense to me with this um six seven eight of pentacles really having all the value that you need uh, to get this thing going, and then the Six of Pentacles over here talking about a distribution of the of that value, and then with this Seven of Wands defending yourself up in the sky, and then the final outcome with this Queen of Swords here, not the King of Swords, but the Queen of Swords, which talks to me of law. I think there could be that it's not that the law isn't taken to its full uh, value; that there's something held back. So this Queen is making an offer, and this Queen uh, down here in the self of the question is the value of that offer, and the Four. Um, five six of swords over here is also speaking to us of, of, of yeah of the value of this truth justice rules law this great big uh, ace a, a plan is being offered here to move forward and it's it's like take it now okay this is coming take it so yeah i think that if there's a plea offered he'll take it so you never know how these things are going to go and i hope they came out the way you thought they would let me know tell me in the comments I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.